welcome back to another video on the Ram 3500. We saw the last video, we went ahead and put new wheels and tires on the truck, and it looks outstanding. However, when it was off, I did notice I have an axle seal leaking. So today we're gonna go ahead and repair that. So my axle seal is leaking on this particular wheel. I was able to tell because on the back side, one, there was a couple patches in the driveway that I, were new that I wasn't aware of from the back end. And looking at this particular wheel on the inside, I can see it dripping down just a little bit. So it's been leaking a little bit in the past. I've noticed it's been damp around the seal, but I never actually replaced it. So now it's actually leaking more. We're gonna go ahead and knock that out. So first step, we're gonna go ahead and jack up the truck. I put a block onto the front in case it rolls, because rear wheel drive. Don't want it to roll down the driveway, obviously. And uh, we're gonna jack it up, get the wheel and tire off. <laughs> All right, so now that we have the wheel off, the next thing we gotta do is get this whole hub area off. So the brake <coughs> drum comes straight off. And yeah, you can see it's been leaking. Uh, there's axle fluid all over there. So that's not great. We'll have to check our axle fluid level when we're done to make sure we haven't had any issues there. But this is the wheel hub assembly right here. So the actual seal resides in here. I did look up a couple videos on how to do this because I wasn't entirely sure. But um, yeah, so next step basically we gotta pull off these bolts right here and then we can take this hub assembly off. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so they seem to be a 14 millimeter. And I don't know if we're gonna need a brake bar or not, but let's go ahead and get started. No, you won't need a breaker bar for this. All right, let me go ahead and pop all those off real quick. All right, so now those bolts are out, it's like it's dripping a little bit. Let me go ahead and jack this side of the truck up higher so I can try and keep the fluid from coming out this side. And then we'll pull this off. All right, let's go ahead and pull this thing out and see what we got. So that's the entire axle, it looks like. We need this guy. So, it's not quite expecting that, but I guess that's what it is. Awesome. Pull our axle out, it's nice and gross. Set that off to the side. Okay, so then we got this assembly right here. Let me show you what's up here. All right, so inside here, I don't know if you can tell, but there is a locking nut. It's nylon not locking nut. There's some metal clip right there. I don't see any other ones. So I'm gonna do a little bit of Googling, but I do know you need a 9 16th or two and 9 16 jack socket, which is this big guy, a couple bucks off Amazon, and that'll fit on that locking nut to get it off. So I need to see about getting this clip off real quick, and then uh, we'll go ahead and pop this off. All right, looks like we should be able to just take a pair of pliers. Okay, so you can see it right here. Literally just slips in like that. And just pull it off and the axle itself will hold this clip in to keep that locking ring from coming off it's pretty easy i'll set that aside and not lose that i don't see any other ones in here so let's go ahead and get our 9 16 or two and 9 16 socket see about pulling this monster out see about okay so obviously it's very loose on here okay so you don't want this too tight. This is basically what's gonna hold your bearings and everything in place. I've done this on trailers before, not on this truck, but that's how I know that. And we're gonna go ahead and pull this guy off. And I'm gonna go ahead and reuse this. If you guys are feeling squeamish about reusing something that's a locking nut, um, go ahead and just pick up a new one. But I didn't do that, so I'm gonna reuse mine. Okay. And then we have our bearings and everything like that. And this comes right off. Drain that out real quick. Nice gross fluid. Actually not that old, but I think it's been turned around for a while inside this bearing. It hasn't regurgitated with the new fluid. So 
Let's get back to that in one second. We're up at the workbench. Hopefully you guys can see what's going on. So we got this bearing right here. We're just going to pop this guy out and set him off to the side just so it doesn't fall out and make a mess later. And then our seal is on this side. And that's this seal right here. So you can kind of tell before we pull that out. I don't want to screw ourselves. You can see that's been leaking everywhere. This is the new one. I'm going to open this guy up and make sure that it's actually what I ordered. So again, got this off Amazon. Uh, part number is right here. So it's the right part number. Okay, there we have it. So that seems to be it. Easy day. So the orientation, you can see these are angled a little bit. The old one has these angled going in. So we're gonna have ours angled going in. I'm just gonna sit on it just like that. Seems to be a perfect fit. So let's go ahead and get this guy out real quick. I did see a little trick on another video of someone doing this. It's actually pretty cool. So let me go ahead and set that up and I'll show you what they did. So all I did is I took the couple lug nuts that I had, stock ones, because I have aftermarket wheels now, and basically popped this guy into the old wheel. And then that's a perfect way to hold this thing from flying around. And we got our seal out. So let me go ahead and undo this contraption real quick. I'll pick back up. All right, so we got the tires out of the way. Everything's good. We're just gonna clean up any kind of gunk or anything from around the surface. We'll go ahead and put our new one in. Pretty straightforward repair, really, as long as you have the right tools. If I didn't have that bigger socket, for instance, would have not been very fun. So, some guys will put a bead of silicone around this. Not a terrible idea, but you shouldn't need it. Um, is what it is. So, I'm pretty sure this is one out due to age. The truck has 250 some thousand miles on it. He's definitely getting up there. And, uh, yeah, so the way the orientation was going, it's going this way. Kind of makes sense because the axle and everything. So I'm going to set it in there just to prevent, honestly, well, you know, just prevent leaks and just be safe. I'm going to put a little bit of silicone around here and then press it in because I have trust issues. So something that is a little interesting, that at least I find interesting, this particular seal was a national seal, which means it's been done before. Now, I get it, 250,000 miles is a pretty long life, but usually these things don't need to get done that often. But this one you can tell has this red ring around it, and the red ring is helpful in that extra sealing. This one didn't have that, which is one other reason why I used some of the uh, silicone. But I don't know, that's kind of interesting to me just because usually if something's been done before like this, there's potential that there's something else like a vibration at play. So we'll see, but for right now, go ahead and do this, put it back together. And uh, it's not really anything I can test at the moment, so it is what it is. But let's go ahead and get back on the truck. All right, so we're at the truck now, and we're just gonna clean this up a little bit. Nothing too crazy, it seems. But that seal looks like it seals right up to this, this sealing surface over here. Go ahead and clean that off a little bit if we can. Make sure she's nice and good. And just so you guys are aware, that's pretty much where it hooks up to. So our brakes are nice and coated and stuff. We're gonna hit that with probably some brake cleaner or something a little bit. But uh, let's go ahead and get this guy back on real quick. So I did some more Googling on this before I went ahead and gave you guys bad information. If you're doing this job, go ahead and pick up any locking nut. I did not. 
You're not supposed to reuse these, same with the wedges. So it is what it is, but they want this thing torqued down to 150 something foot pounds while rotating the wheel. And then you're supposed to loosen it one eighth of a turn. So rotate it, tighten, rotate it, tighten, rotate it. And this way you're not crushing the bearings. So mine was obviously not on here that tight. So take this with a grain of salt if you're doing this to prepare yourself. But I'm gonna go ahead and call mine good. I'm gonna have to go back in here and basically and replace this nut, but I need this truck for tomorrow because I'm taking it to work. So loosen it up a little bit. It's good. But that's so you get the bearings to seat all the way and everything like that. So keep that in mind. So it's definitely a lot tighter than it was a minute ago. And should be good. Um, yeah, but just definitely keep that in mind. And then if you're doing new bearings, definitely pack them with grease before you put them together. These have already been in here. There's gonna be plenty of axle loops getting back to here, so I'm not worried about that. And we'll put our little wedge back in for now. But yeah, um, definitely worth noting. I'm also fairly confident. Oh, well, I guess not. So that'll work. I'm pretty. I'm very confident this isn't going to come out. If you lost the wedge, for instance, you'd be screwed. But that's not us. So let's go ahead and put the axle back in next. Everything lines up still, so that's nice. And, um, and these guys get torqued down to 95 foot pounds. So I'm gonna bring out the torque wrench in a minute and get that done. So let's you're gonna time lapse to finish this off. So now would be a good time to go and take some brake cleaner, clean off your brake pads because obviously that's not going to stop very well if they're covered in axle grease. Um, definitely do not want that. So I want to try and get these things to be dry so they stick for very obvious reasons. And then same thing with the rotor in here and all that crap. And uh, there we go. So that's pretty much that. If you get, if you happen to have this thing off, it's probably a good time to take your other wheel as well and do an e-brake adjustment. You can kind of just adjust your brakes. Uh, I'm gonna do that off camera though. But all right, so wheels are back on. Torque lug down to 150 foot pounds, so everything is done and torqued. Last thing we gotta go and do is check our diff fluid level. It's been leaking, there's a chance it went down too low. And if it goes too low, what's gonna happen is, well, I'll get down there and show you, but basically you're gonna starve bearings. All right, so underneath the truck, as you can see, axle fill port is right here. And you can kind of see where it's just a little bit level with the axle tubes. And we don't want it to drop too much further below that or you cause problems for yourself. Um, so let me go ahead and get these loosened up real quick off camera, and then we'll go ahead and check it. All right, let's see what we got. Okay. Oh yeah, we're right there. So we're good. Um, it's just at the very edge of the tip right there. So you want to basically level with that fill hole. So we're good, we didn't lose much at all. It was pretty gross though. We might need to change that out at some point, but there she has it. All right, so wheels are back on. Torque lug down to 150 foot pounds. So everything is done and torqued. Last thing we gotta go and do is check our diff fluid level. It's been leaking, there's a chance it went down too low. And if it goes too low, what's gonna happen is, well, I'll get down there and show you. But basically you're gonna starve bearings.